What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. This is the beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some different tips and tricks for this phone to help you get more familiar with the device. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out my full review of it as well. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is how to change your screen timeout time. Now this is definitely a really important thing to do when you first get the phone because it's going to be different for everyone depending on how you use your phone. If you're not really consuming a whole lot of content for example, where you really want your screen on for a longer period of time without falling asleep, then maybe your screen timeout time can be really short. But on the other hand, if you're doing stuff like reading, watching videos, playing games, looking at photos, all that kind of thing, then you might want it to be a little longer. So let me show you exactly how to change it. So the first thing we're going to do is go to settings. Now there are two ways to do this. The first way is pulling down the shade right here. And the settings icon is this little gear right here. The second way is to go to your settings app. And by default, you can find that in your app drawer. So if we go like this, settings is right here. And I personally just dragged it right here. So that way it's on the home screen and a lot more convenient to access. And just in case you need to see it done, this is a really easy thing to do. All you got to do is go back to your app drawer. Go like this, like this, and there we go. Now I have two settings apps. You get the picture. So back to changing the screen timeout time. First thing we're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to display. And in the display menu, screen timeout is going to be right here. As you can see, mine is set to 10 minutes, which is the longest setting available. And you can also set it to as short as 15 seconds. So again, if you're really not consuming a lot of content or really doing anything where you need your screen to be on for a longer period of time, then you can easily set it to 15, 30 seconds. It doesn't really need to be that long. And that way you can also save some battery because if you have it set to something like 10 minutes, you could easily forget to lock your phone. And then the screen is just gonna stay on for 10 minutes straight every time you forget to do this. And that can drain the battery pretty quickly. So when it comes to screen timeout time, definitely play around with it and decide for yourself which setting works best for you. Because again, depending on how you use your phone, it's probably going to be different for pretty much everyone. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the clock on your lock screen. Now in case you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the clock right here. As you can see, it's a pretty classic look, but you can customize it quite a bit. So to do this, go to settings. From here, go to lock screen. And from this menu, go to clock style. So as you can see, these are the default settings. So we have several different styles to choose from. You can also change the color. When you're done, be sure to hit done. And now if we go back to the lock screen, the clock is going to be whatever you set it to. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen lock type. Now this is basically going to dictate how you actually get into your phone. So for example, if I lock the phone right now, you can see mine is a pin, and this is pretty much the standard. Nowadays, I want to say most people do use a pin to get into their phones. And of course, there's also the fingerprint scanner. So let's take a look at how we can set this up. So first things first, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to lock screen. And as you can see up here, we got the screen lock type. It's going to ask for your pin. And as you can see, we got several different options here. We got swipe pattern, pin, password, or none. Now swipe and none, of course, are no security at all. Pattern is more of an old fashioned kind of screen lock, better than nothing, but if you really want to keep your phone secure, it's probably not the best. Like I said before, pin is pretty much the standard these days. And then password, if you really want high security and you want something that's super hard to figure out. Underneath this, we got the biometric section. And this is where you can turn on and off the fingerprint scanner and the face unlock. So if you don't want to use either of these features, you can of course toggle them off. But to set them up in the first place, you have to go to a slightly different spot. So if we go back to the main menu. So right now we are in the main settings menu. And from here, we're going to go to biometrics and security. So in this section, you can set up both your fingerprints and your face. For example, say we want to set up face recognition. All you need to do is tap here. And after you put in your pin, it's going to give you some on-screen instructions walking you through exactly how to get this set up. And again, once you do have your fingerprints or your face set up, you can go back to lock screen, put in your pin one more time, and you'll be able to turn on face unlock and the fingerprint scanner down here under biometrics. 
The next thing I'm going to show you is how to customize your notifications. This is definitely one thing you're going to want to do right when you get the phone because notifications can really add up and some of them can be super annoying, especially if you have a bunch of apps. And besides just being annoying, if you're getting a bunch of pointless notifications, it could make it a lot easier for you to miss something important. So to get to the notification section, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to notifications. And there are lots of different things in this menu, some important and some not. The top thing, basically how much detail you want in the pop-up notifications. And you can also turn pop-up notifications off for whatever apps you want. So that way, for example, you don't have Angry Birds giving you a bunch of random notifications to remind you to play the game. But maybe you want to keep pop-ups from messages, for example, so you don't miss a text. It's really up to you. And you can also turn all of them off if you really don't want to get pop-up notifications at all. Now, if you want to turn notifications from specific apps on and off, what you're going to want to do is go to recently sent, go to more, and this is basically going to give you all the apps that have sent you notifications within the last seven days. And you can turn off whatever ones you want. So for example, I don't really have a reason to get a notification from weather. So I'm going to turn that off. Photos, maybe that might be important. So I'm going to leave that on. Google Play Store, again, could be important, but you get the picture. Pretty much anything you want to turn off, you can turn off notifications from in this section. Now keep in mind, there are certain things that you can't turn off, and those are basically like system notifications. They're not showing up in here, but be aware if you do see certain system related notifications that can't be turned off from this menu, that is normal. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. The next thing I'm going to show you is a quick and easy way to customize your home screen. So to do this, it's really simple. All you need to do is press and hold a finger on a blank spot on your home screen. Now be sure not to do this on an app or a widget because if you do, it's going to look like this, which of course, maybe you want to change a widget or something like that. That's all well and good, but that's not going to do what we want in this situation. So again, just be sure when you're trying to customize your home screen, press and hold your finger on a blank spot. So for example, we're going to go like this just a second. And there we go. As you can see, you can change your wallpapers, themes, widgets, and just general home screen settings. And in addition to this, you can also add and remove different pages with different apps. So with this feature, you can really customize your home screen and make it your own. Now this brings me to the next thing I'm going to show you, which is how you can hide an app. Hiding an app is a really cool thing to be able to do. And besides Samsung phones, not many phones have this option. This can be especially useful if you have those apps you just can't delete and you get tired of seeing them in your app drawer. This can help you get rid of that clutter. So from this menu, which in case you missed it, I'm going to show you how to get here one more time. So from anywhere on your home screen, as long as it's a blank spot, press and hold your finger here for just a second. And then from this screen, go to settings. And from here, go to where it says hide apps. As you can see, we got a list of every app on the phone and to hide something, simply tap on it like this. And when you hide an app, of course, it's going to show up here under hidden apps. So that way, if you ever want to unhide it, it's really easy and convenient to do. So once you're done hiding apps, go ahead and hit done. And now if we go back to the app drawer, the app I just hid is nowhere to be found. Now again, to unhide an app, it's really simple. Go back to that same menu. Go back to hide apps. Anything you hide is going to be up here under hidden apps. Simply tap on the app you want to unhide, hit done, and don't forget to do this because if you just hit the back button, it's not going to change anything. Now if we go back to the app drawer, as you can see, the app I unhid is right back there. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Easy Mode. Now this feature is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's basically going to make everything on the phone a little bit bigger. So the phone in general is easier to use. So to activate Easy Mode, we're going to go to Settings. From here, go to Display. And from here, go to Easy Mode right here. And as you can see, this is basically what Easy Mode is going to do. To turn it on, of course, just toggle it on. It's going to take a second to load, but once it does, as you can see, everything is going to be a little bit larger, so the phone in general is going to be slightly easier to use. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called touch sensitivity. Now, like the name of the feature implies, this is going to make your screen a little bit more sensitive, and it's really meant for if you have a thicker screen protector and it gets in the way of your finger when you're trying to use your phone. So when you're in that situation, having touch sensitivity on is going to kind of help offset this. So to get to this feature, we're going to go to settings, from here, go to display. And in the display menu, go pretty much all the way down and touch sensitivity is right here. 
the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change your system navigation. As you can see down here, we got the classic three button navigation that Android has been using pretty much forever, but there are several different things you can do to this. So first of all, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to display. And from here, go to navigation bar. And as you can see, we got several different options here. First of all, you can change the order of the buttons, and this is really just gonna switch your back button in recent apps. So if you like it better like this, that's always an option. And then the other thing, really the main thing in this menu, is the option to change from buttons to swipe gestures. So once you activate swipe gestures, the buttons are going to be replaced by this little bar down here. And in my opinion, it looks a lot cleaner and more modern. Now using gesture navigation does take a little getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. So let me show you how it works. To go home, you're going to swipe up from the bottom like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger about halfway up instead. And to go back, swipe from left to right or right to left. Now when you have gesture navigation on and you go to more options, you're going to see another feature called swipe up from bottom. Now I personally think this one's a little weird. When you have it on, you're going to have three lines at the bottom instead of one. And basically to go home, swipe up from the middle. To go to your recent apps, swipe up from the left. And to go back, swipe up on the right. Now I personally feel like if you're going to use this, you might as well just use buttons. But I guess if you want a little bit more of a cleaner, modern look, and you still want to use basically button navigation, it does kind of make sense. But I personally like the normal gesture navigation a little bit better. But honestly, on Samsung phones, I like to use buttons. It just feels and looks a lot more right on this phone. For some reason, Motorola phones typically have gesture navigation as their default. And then of course, iPhones do as well. iPhones don't even have the option to use buttons. But at the end of the day, it's really up to personal preference. So if you haven't tried out either of those features, I definitely recommend giving them a try because who knows, maybe you might like them better. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out my full review of it on the channel. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. But as always, I will see you in the next video.